Hey everyone, George here with another YouTube tutorial uh, video for you guys. In this video, I'm going to take a few minutes to talk to you about the simple process of adding income and expenses uh, to Quicken 2010 Home and Business. Um, here recently, over the last several days, I've had uh, numerous people uh, PM me to ask me what I use for my taxing software to keep track of my income and my expenses and uh, my different businesses. Not only the businesses that I own personally, but the businesses that, um, uh, the work at home businesses that I do and everything. So therefore, I, I went ahead and made this quick and uh, again, uh, video for you guys. I'm gonna walk you through it real fast. It's very simple. Uh, it has a lot of rich features and, and things for you to try out. However, all only thing I use it for is a fancy checkbook type thing. And it, I mean, it automatically adds and subtracts and does all the work for you. All you have to do is input the information into it. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. First thing you're going to want to do is go to File and then go to New Quicken File. Type in any name you want to. Then come over here and click on OK. And I'll take a minute for it to load. Okay, here uh, I don't ever worry about registering it myself, but that's just me because I don't want to get a lot of spam, so I always just click on register later. Over here, your accounts, uh, as you can see, I did a new one, so I didn't set nothing up. What you'll do is you'll click on the accounts tab right here, you'll come down, and you'll click on add account, okay? When you click on Add Account, it'll ask you to set the account type. You have checking, savings, and all the rest of them that you see here. Me, like I said, I just use it as a fancy, uh, dazzy, you know, uh, checkbook type thing. So I'll just leave it uh, with checking enabled. Now click Next. Here, just in the name of your bank. Now you can do anything you want. So. You know, it doesn't have to make sense or anything. Um, but also, you don't also have to enter this information at all. So you can just click on the do not want to enter my financial institution and click next. Now you can, it will ask you for all your banking account information and then it will actually pull that in automatically, okay? But that choice is up to you. I'm just showing you the easy, simple method of adding income and expenses. And before I go any further, I will add this. If you have more than one business or more than one work at home program, what I would suggest doing is keeping them all separate. Now, if you don't want to do that, by all means, you can add them all into one file. But me personally, I just keep them all separate because it's just a lot easier for me at tax time to know which business made what money, what expenses, what income, things like that. Okay? So here I'll go and click next and I'll ask me for the account name and I'll just type something in there and I'll choose business transactions and then come over here and click on next the statement ending date and the statement ending balance now what I do suggest is if you're starting off uh, with this and let's say you've already got five hundred dollars um, already uh, put away or you know to start your business um, or that's what your balance is right now in one of your accounts Go ahead and put that in there, whether it's PayPal, your checking, a savings account, whatever the case may be. If you want to start a brand spanking new, just simply enter 0.00, okay? Click on Next, and I'll tell you the summary of the account added, and then Done, okay? Now, remember when it asked us to, what we wanted to name this, and we chose KGB? If you added more than one, it would have each one listed here, whether it be KGB or, you know, eBay or Quicken or whatever you had out of here. Now to view what you have listed, simply go right here and click on the name of the account and pull this up. Now you can do things one of two different ways, okay? The first way is you can do everything just like how you see here, okay? Over here you also have the account uh, actions where you can do all kinds of different things, but that's in a different video for later on. But here, as I mentioned, you can enter in the date, a number if you have it, um, a payee, a memo. Here's what the income was for or what the expense was for. The category, here's all your different categories. Where there is a payment, uh, meaning that's your expense if you're not familiar, and a deposit, that's what your income would be, okay? 
Now you can do enter, edit, or split. Now if you do split, it would just bring it up into different things, but we won't get into that, okay? Now what I always do is I always either click on profit and loss, or I'll click on cash flow. Either one is the same exact thing, okay? So let's start this off with a simple thing. Let's say you're in a business and you track in all your new customers, okay, or even the old ones. What you're going to do first is you're going to come over here and you're going to select on business actions, okay? Once you select on business actions, you're going to come down here and you're going to click on customers. You're going to then choose the subcategory add customer. That's going to bring up this little window right here. When it asks you for the payee name right here, that's the name of your customer. So for all intents purposes for this tutorial, we're just going to put Joe Smo. If I could type it correctly, for the uh, street, obviously you put their street number and street uh, name for the address. The city. And no, this is not a real address, or at least not that I know of. The state. And again, this doesn't have to be right, of course, you know, which is not. Okay. Over here, under include this payee in, I always put quick fill, and you'll see why I do that in just a moment, okay? And then, of course, also in the customer list. Over here, you do the contact. I don't worry about any of this except for a phone number. Now, it doesn't have an option for a cell phone, but in the work phone, I always put what I know is the best number to contact them on. Now, if you're d using this program, for instance, I do drop shipping on eBay, okay? So one of the things I always do is whatever number is on my customer's profile for the number, it goes right here, okay? And now this is not mine or any real number that I know of, okay? Now, once I do all this, I'll go back, make sure all that's fine, and then I'll click on OK. As you see here, my... Uh, new customers right there. I'll go up here and I'll just minimize it which brings it down to here and then I can bring that back up at any time or if I need to do it again I just click on business actions then customers and subcategory add customer and I'll bring this window up again with the prompt already filled. Now if you m simply minimize that and then bring it back up you just click on new and it'll bring up the window to add a new customer okay so let's go ahead and add a transaction by going to the end area right here and then clicking on the add transaction button. Now where it says receive from, this is where you're going to enter your customer's name. Now you can do it one of two ways. You can either use a drop down which gives you a list of all your customers, in this case Joe Schmo for instance, or you can start typing out their name and then highlight it. Now the amount, let's say this was a $150 transaction, okay? You put the date, generally try to keep up with this and the day the sale happens if not just simply go in here and use it or click on the little calendar icon right here and then choose whatever the date of the sale that happened down here you're going to select on what account you want to add this transaction to now remember a few moments ago when I said you could add more than one account to one quicken file I personally don't recommend that but if you do it right here when you're in the transaction I'll add, ask you what account you want to add that to okay so make sure you choose the right one if you have more than one set up here you'll it will ask you for the method or check number. Here what I always do, uh, a lot of times I'll get paid by PayPal if it's a credit card, or I'll get cash, or I'll get credit card. Now if you do credit card, you have to type it in one whole word credit card with no space, or otherwise the system will start messing it up for you. Okay, but uh, that's generally the three ways. Now if you write a check to somebody or they write a check to you, you can just put the check number down here and that's fine too. Okay, now. Down here, the category, as I mentioned, it has a whole bunch of others. Uh, but since we're doing uh, uh, income, I just put sales and then the memo, okay? Uh, this can be anything, whether you're doing eBay. What I normally do if I'm doing eBay is I put eBay and then I put the, uh, the eBay item number, which you can get from looking at your sales um, uh, transaction with that customer. You can get your eBay ID number there, and I just take that in. So if anyone ever has a question, I can uh, either call eBay or I can go, depending on how far back it was, I can go into eBay and I can pull up that individual uh, item and, and, you know, go from there with the transaction, okay? All right, once you're done, you just click on OK, and here it is. It added my income of $150 over here. It'll show 150 
Now let's say I had a little bit of an expense with this, okay? Okay, now let's say, for instance, uh, you know, this was eBay and uh, I had an expense, okay? I don't make a customer profile just for eBay, I just simply type in eBay. Now, if this was eBay fees, I'll type in eBay fees, okay? Now, let's say my fees was, say, so just say a dollar fifty, ten percent, okay? Again, the same thing. Put the date that it was that you're paying this to eBay, and then down here you put the method you're paying it, in which normally is uh, through PayPal. Down here you put the category. Uh, what I always choose is biz miscellaneous. Okay, and then again. Uh, I just put eBay and then uh, the ID number for that transaction. Simple things like that. Then I'll click on OK. Now here you'll see it says a buck fifty or dollar fifty for my expense, and here you'll see it took my profit from one hundred fifty down to one forty eight fifty. Okay. Now let's say you have another transaction. Okay, let's say you have a PayPal transaction. No problem. Pay to. PayPal or you can put PayPal.com it doesn't really matter okay now with that let's say you have an amount to it okay let's say that amount is six dollars again put the date the method of how you pay which is you know th their PayPal so they take it out themselves category biz miscellaneous then the memo and of course you don't have to type all this stuff in you can just simply copy and paste it hit OK and there you go it added my uh, total for my total expenses now is seven dollars and fifty cents so it went from one four one fifty to one forty eight uh... fifty um, down to one forty two fifty okay now let's say um, this is an item you have to pay shipping for okay uh... let's say you had to print out the shipping label okay so pay to um, if it is through ebay put ebay fees okay if you take the item yourself to say uh, you know USPS or FedEx or whatever put in the name that you're using them for if you're not printing the label through eBay to where it be technically considered eBay shipping fees do uh, put the name of the uh, shipping care that you use to keep track of your expenses let's say it costs you twenty dollars to ship this off again the date the method um, here most likely would be credit card unless you do uh, print out uh, a shipping label from their website uh, with the category again I just put biz miscellaneous the memo this time it would be like FedEx and then you could put like the tracking number or uh, FedEx and then like a space and then like put eBay and then put the eBay item number for that and then come down here and hit OK It'll again add that twenty dollars to this amount, and then it'll take your profit from one fifty to one forty eight fifty to one forty two fifty down to one twenty two fifty. See how it keeps changing this depending on what your income and your expenses are. Okay, and that's pretty much it. Now, if you have a long term um, uh, relationship with one of your people that you do have an expense with, you can easily set up a, a customer thing. Uh, but what it would be even better is setting up bills and vendors and you can add a vendor and it'll keep it uh, checked just like that as well. The same thing as if you were to add an actual customer to this and it's the same exact process. Okay. Now the last thing I want to show you before I end of this video let's say you're like me and you run a home business. Okay. More than one or just one it doesn't matter. But let's say you have your kids that also come onto your account, but you don't want them having access to this for obvious reasons. Okay, simply go up to help, come down here to I do apologize, it's not um, it's not help. You're gonna to come to tools, come down to password vault and set a new password vault here. Just add in whatever password you want. It can be anything at all. Uh, do it twice and then click add. Now when you do that, anytime you go to open this Quicken Files, you will need that password. There's no way around it. If you lose the password, you're going to just restart the Quicken File all over again. Uh, so I do re uh, recommend that you keep it something simple. 
short and sweet to the point, but something you're going to remember that nobody else would think of, okay? It could be numbers, it could be letters and numbers, capital, lowercase, whatever. Just remember exactly how you put it. If you need to make a, a list of the password on your phone or on your computer or something, that's really up to you, but this is just a way to be able to encrypt the file to where someone's going to need the password to access it, okay, guys? All right, I hope that uh, answered any questions that you might have on how to add uh, income as well as expenses to Quicken. Uh, 2010 home and business have any questions uh, feel free to leave a comment I'll get to you as soon as possible feel free to like share and subscribe and I'll catch you guys later take care